Hello. Hello. My name is Jose. Dino. For everyone out there, my name is HJ19 here. This is my YouTube channel, Handsome okay. Junior 19. Okay. As I know it, you're a, a voice actor, correct? I am indeed. Yes. Okay. I am a voice actor. So your your name is Dino or Dino? Dino. Dino, just like the dinosaur in the Flintstones. Okay, okay. Dino Andrade, right? Andrade, yes. yes. I got it right. Ah, two for two. <laughs> there, was another, there was another person that had a weird last name, and I made sure to get it on the first try, so yes. Good job. Good job. So tell me a little bit about all the voices, or at least the few iconic voices that you have voice acted. Okay, a few iconic voices. Uh, the Scarecrow from Batman Arkham Asylum. You're in my Arkham now, Batman. Uh, geez, uh, from World of Warcraft, uh, Professor Putricide, uh, good news everyone, the slime is flowing again. Uh, Geblin Mechatork from Warcraft, uh, Operation Nobregon begins now! Oh, and Mimiron from Warcraft is, uh, let's see, I told you, don't push that button! <laughs> For the glorious, um, glory! <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've been popped for the Rice Krispies campaigns. Uh, snap, crackle, pop, Rice Krispies. Uh, uh, GIs just sound like they're from Brooklyn for uh, Call of Duty Roads to Victory. Uh, God, I mean, uh, on and on. I've, I've done a lot. I've done a lot. I've been uh, recently uh, flinch on uh, Sophia the First. Uh, that was a lot of fun playing him. Uh, I, I keep pretty busy. I keep pretty busy. Any future projects that you might be excited for? Uh, I've done a number of things. Well, there's some huge video games that I legally can't tell you about. Uh, but I've also uh, recently co-starred in a new uh, web series for DreamWorks, for DreamWorks TV called Get My Goat. Mm. Uh, so I'm, I'm the co-star of that. Uh, I done radio and television campaigns all over for uh, Target, San Diego Zoo, um, uh, State Farm. Uh, I've just done a new series for uh, the Barbie animated series. Uh, I, I, it's like I'm, I'm working all the time. I'm working all the time. Well, I mean, you could tell the voices are great, honestly. Um, your attire is uh, what, Star Wars, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I happen to really like Star Wars a lot, but what can I say? I gotta rock I gotta rock my classic trek. I gotta. I this I, I I I personally I think the whole rivalry between Star Wars and Star Trek I think is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I love them both. Uh, you know, I mean Star Trek is great allegory and and Star Wars is great escapist entertainment. It's like they're two different worlds. Just the, because they they have connections to science fiction doesn't mean they're the same thing. You know, I mean, you've got this great escapist hero's journey that you know, especially Luke Skywalker's story is is just this wonderful, fun, great entertainment. And Star Trek is allegory that talks about what's going on in the human condition. Apples and oranges that happen to be in the science fiction universe. And I grew up with Star Trek. I, I was born uh, in 1963. So Star Trek is now uh, about to celebrate its 50th anniversary. I'm 52. So oh, you don't Star look Trek, Pat, yeah, you don't no. look older than uh, thirty. <laughs> honestly, you're you look young. Thank you. No, it's a uh, good good Mexican genes. Uh, so I mean, Star Trek has been a part of my fantasy life all my life. So <laughs> honestly, it feels like the the bad blood kind of died down after Le Leonard Nimoy's passing. So I mean, a lot of people, even fans from Star Wars and Star Trek, you know, they you know they tilted their head for him, and it's just like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Oh my God, I, I grew up, I was like the only Mexican kid in an Air Force neighborhood and it was, it was in the late 60s, early 70s when you still had a lot of the social unrest that was going on, the civil rights movement happening, the Vietnam War, the nation was divided and here I was again, this only, the, the only Mexican kid in this uh, Air Force neighborhood, I, I got my ass kicked constantly. 
um, uh, where I just, I didn't know what world I belonged in. And then I see this television series uh, that features this alien who was half human, half Vulcan, who wasn't quite sure what world he, belie he belonged in. I was like, oh my God, I get that. I get this in spades. And Spock became my hero. Uh, and I had the honor of meeting Mr. Nimoy once. That was, that was such a great thrill. And I told him that story. Uh, I was like, that, that was an amazing thing. Uh, and, and so, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. think I think yeah. the, 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 the line has been drawn again because um, currently Star Wars is having a contest for their film uh, fest or like a little co film contest and like on the rules it says please do not include any st uh, Star Trek things <laughs> so it's just like okay I guess the line has been drawn again <laughs> but uh, overall yeah you, you have encompassed a lot of things and it's really great to see you and um, I'm in Star Trek Online in <laughs> fact so that's so I, I, I am connected to the Star Trek universe. So very so excited and honored about that. Yes, I'm in there officially. Definitely, definitely. So um, besides, um, besides, what's your favorite actually? What's your favorite type of voice acting for, from video games to animation? Uh, animation for sure. Mm. Animation for sure. Um, original animation where we're, we are recorded first and then everything is animated afterwards mm -hmm. um, because I'm able to really let my imagination go as opposed to say anime where everything's already been done and we have to precisely match lip flap and precisely match lines and and so on and, and to me that's not as much fun as just you know, letting the improv skills kick in and, and just have fun with the character and let it go where the character wants to go. And that to me is, is, is the most fun. That is the most fun. And it looks like you have a lot of fun. You have keeping yourself busy and uh, I'm sure we're going to be able to see so much more of you. I'm so excited to see sure what you're next. So. I sure hope so. You know, I'm not one of those actors who said to myself, you know, Someday I want to go to Broadway. I'm just doing this to pay the bills. It's like, no, this is what I wanted to do. I grew up, again, uh, someone who loved Star Trek, I grew up loving great works of imagination. I grew up just, just soaking in all of Gene Roddenberry, Rod Serling, Ray Bradbury, H.G. Uh, Wells, uh, I mean, y you name it, the, the work of Ray Harryhausen and the Universal Monster Films. I grew up loving great works of imagination and I wanted to be part of it. Voice acting was my way to do it because 90% of what we do in voiceover is works of great imagination. I unless I happen to do, you know, a a Madden football game or, or you know, you know, Grand Theft, you know, auto, yes. whatever. Um, all the really great storytelling being done in video games and animation and so on is all great works of fantasy, science fiction, horror, and that's what I wanted to be a part of. And so I am. That's honestly great. So how has WonderCon been for you this, uh, these, three, these two days, actually? Oh, WonderCon is great. It's just one of my favorite conventions. I, I, I love it. Uh, I'm particularly glad that, or, or I should say thankful, <laughs> that it was in Los Angeles this year because uh, it was uh, all of an 18-minute drive for me to get here, which is a little different than when it's in Anaheim. Uh, Anaheim has its own very special vibe because of Disneyland and so on, which I've taken my boy to so many times. Uh, so it, it becomes a whole family vacation, area vacation thing when we do there. And I understand they're going back to Anaheim next year. But this, so this was kind of like a nice little break this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what are your views on the new Star Trek movie, Star Trek Beyond? Uh, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm one of those guys who loves to be surprised. So I don't read reviews of any kind. I don't, when I hear people say, well, you know, here's my thoughts based on the trailer. You're looking at a trailer, you moron. Judge the movie, yeah. you know? And that's literally what I think. Anytime I hear somebody, well, <laughs> from what I see, based my analysis on the trailer, it's like, yeah, you're an idiot. Dino Andrade says, you're an idiot. <laughs> Judge a piece of art by the art itself, not what some marketing bozo put together as the trailer. If you do, 
you're an idiot. With a capital I, Dino Andrade says, you're an idiot. <laughs> Judge the piece of work for itself. Yeah. So, ask me this question after I see the movie. <laughs> and I'm going to avoid everything I possibly can about it until I actually see it. Because that's the kind of guy I am. I, I want to, you know, just soak it in and enjoy it and have no preconceived notions when I go in. That's how I enjoy things to their fullest. <laughs> Absolute fullest. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you so much. And I You're hope very, to see you in the welcome. future. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, I'm, I, I will be around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, be around. I'll make sure to catch you at the next convention. Cool. Thank you once again. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>